Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're checking out Stone Brewing Company's Enjoy by July 4th, 2022. comes out every July 4th and I've only had like one or or two of the uh, Enjoy By series beers um, but I had this at the Stone Brewery I think like last year when we were in the area around the July 4th weekend um, and I was just so surprised at how good of a beer of a yeah of an IPA was. Hmm. Interesting. They brew these uh, apparently to not last. They're like hyper fresh, I guess, and they just don't. Yeah, they're brewed to enjoy within 38 days. Oh, okay. Hmm. Well, let's read this can. A fruitfully independent double IPA. Ooh, that's ironic. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, Stone Enjoy by 7422 Tangerine and Pineapple IPA. Ale with tangerine and pineapple. It's a 9% beer. Um, brewed by Stone Richmond. That's pretty much uh, all it says. It also has an independent craft label and this beer is apparently vegan. So there's that. It's also brewed with Simcoe uh, Mosaic Magnum and Citra. Yeah, we've got a, a densely yellow beer. A little bit of hot particulates mm -hmm. that I can see not, floating around in the bottom there. Yeah. Not, not super aggressive. Yeah, not terribly dense either. So kind of like a nice balanced haziness. Yeah, at least by the looks of it, I would call this a fruity IPA, not necessarily a hazy IPA. There's a little bit of haze happening in there, yeah. but I'm sure that's just like hot particulates and yeast and things like that. Um, so, yeah. And they also use like actual tangerines and pineapple, yeah. so that probably adds to the Probably adds to clarity. also uh, why it's enjoyed by. All right, well, let's uh, dive into this uh, aroma and see what we get. Oh, yeah, man, fruity. Like loads of that's tangerine, really citrus fruits. Um, that sweetness from the pineapple. It's got that, um, it's got a little bit of the, this, this sort of like fruit cup thing happening. Mm -hmm. That's it, nice. It almost smells like it's gonna be like super sweet, but. Yeah, kind of. I don't remember it being super sweet. Mm, well, all right, let's dive in and see what we taste. Cheers. Cheers. Ooh, okay. That's nice. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's that. smooth. I like to call it the classic stone. Bitterness. Stone bitterness yeah. in there where you're still getting that nice kick of um, the hops in there, but then you're also getting that fruit, which kind of balances out. So you get this like bitterness and then sweetness. Yeah, you really do. I can't tell which comes first. I think it's the yeah. sweetness for me that comes first. And then that bitterness. The bitterness really does like sit in the back end a little bit. And that's typical stone right. beer right there. That alcohol percentage is hidden really well. I'm not getting any of that kick. Um, right. It's very smooth. Yeah, for a it's really, beer. really smooth. That's nice. I think almost all of them are around 9%, all the Enjoy By. I think they all are. As far as I can remember, every time they come out with one, I feel like it's 9%. I could be wrong, but I mean, I feel like every time I'm like, wow, that's a big beer. Now, of all the, the ones you've had, this is your favorite, you said. This so far is my favorite, yeah. Okay. Just because it has the qualities that I normally like in my APAs. Okay, that makes sense. This is very typical stone yeah. beer. It's just a little a little bit heavier on the fruitiness maybe. But other than that, I mean you're getting that bitterness, like you said, you're getting that like that denseness, that that sort of like deep, um, earthy sort of quality to it. It's it's very it's danky, you know, and that's a very stony thing to do. And I think the fruits kind of give it that summer vibe because it's July 4th, yeah. so. That's really nice. Barbecue and fruits. I actually like that a lot. Now, let's touch on the independent issue a little bit. Yeah, it's just, it's kind of ironic that, you know, they, they have all these, they're proud to be an, an independent craft brewery. And just recently, like about a week ago, maybe not even. Like three days ago. They ended up uh, being purchased by Sapporo. From what I understand of this acquisition, they're... <sighs> Part of the deal is that they're going to sell Sapporo beers in their facilities. Uh, and also, Sapporo just takes over, I guess, the company. I mean, as far as I know, as far as that article read, that's what it is. Um, so it's just so crazy because they're the last 
vestige of a brewery. Them and Sam Adams are the two breweries that I never expected to sell out. I mean, yeah. they had this whole thing in like 2016 where they went on video and they were talking about like, we'll never sell out to big beer. Like, F that, like that's ridiculous. So we hate big beer. And they were planning it back then, apparently. Yeah. Wow. As far crazy. as this article was saying. And I was like, what? Gibbs, that's crazy. Yeah. So they're, the, they're one of the last few true American breweries um, that I never thought would yeah. would go that direction. But the situation was that like the investors' money was due and in like 2024, I think, and they couldn't, I guess they couldn't no, they pay it back on time. Yeah. They forecasted or whatever, did the math or whatever. And um, and they were like, we got to do something for a ton of cash. We got to sell stuff. And so mm -hmm. that's the deal. I don't know if it was mismanagement of money or mm -hmm. if it was like expansion woes or, or, or they did it too fast. I don't know. But uh, it's a sad day for yeah. craft beer everywhere, I, I mean, think. I just hope that in some part of the agreement with Sapporo that they still have the rights to their brand and they can still keep the staff on board and like yeah. the brewers on board and everybody on board. Cause I know with Devil's Backbone, that was part of the agreement where they got to keep their their creativity behind them. They even got to keep all the recipes and everything. Right. Basically Anheuser-Busch was just like, do what you've been doing and continue to make money, but just right. give us like this percentage, percentage of yeah. it and we're good. And like you and us are fine. Um, and I hope they keep making this one cause this is actually not bad. I like this one, it's pretty good. 9% though, I mean, yeah, I feel like they should tone it down a little bit because if you're if you're celebrating on July 4th, you know how this goes. You're not gonna just drink one 9% beer, right? Even if it's in a 12, uh, 12 ounce can, you're gonna have a few. Yeah. So maybe like a 7% enjoy by, guys? I mean, come on, let's be realistic yeah, about this. I've maybe, always thought that the ABV is a little high too. It's a little restrictive for people that don't want to go that hard, you know? Yeah, like, or that kid just can't tolerate it. Yeah. You know? All right, that's it. If you like beer reviews, hit the like and subscribe button. Until next time, stay crafty. Cheers. Cheers.